I'd be willing to bet that every single one of you out there loves going to the doctor. Right? Y'all love the doctor, the dentist, and then there's the dollars. Well, welcome to my, my rehab room. Yes, I'm getting ready to have some foot surgery, and so doctors has been a fun thing. You know, it's funny when you make an appointment and you tell the doctor, I want this done. I want this damn bunion removed. Then they go in and they start talking to you about the procedure and how it's done. They say, so if you choose to go this route, and I go, why the heck did I call you? Why did I make an appointment? Why did I just pay you $30 for you to try to talk me out of it? That then makes no sense. So, you know, and then of course you wait for two hours before you finally see the doctor. And I don't know what that's up with because there's only like two people in the waiting room. Oh, we're short staffed. Well, when I walk back there, I see about 10 different people. I don't know what they're doing and why they're short staffed and why it took so long to see the doctor to begin with. That's a interesting thing, but that was a specialist. That's a, that's a podiatrist. So, and uh, just a couple of weeks, I'm going to be needing this here wheelchair. <laughs> and I can maneuver a wheelchair. No, not, not so bad. But then, in order to get surgery done on my foot, I had to go see a family doctor. Well, I haven't lived in this area that long, so I had to find one. And I had to find one that was not only in network, but that was accepting patients. You mean to tell me there's that shortage of doctors that you, there's ones that live like right in my neighborhood that, oh, we, we don't want to. I had to drive 45 minutes to a clinic because the doctor there is accepting new patients <laughs> and in that work. And then they give you the little sheet and you feel like you're signing your life away, right? And don't we just love doing that? Telling them all of our pertinent, intimate information. Like whether you're married or not, what the hell does that matter? What's that got to do with getting surgery release? You know, I don't know. Obviously, I'm going to have someone take me home from the hospital after. It doesn't have to be a husband. It can be anybody. But I don't know why they ask those questions. So you go in there and they do blood work and they do an EKG. Well, that's the first time I ever had an EKG day. Have you ever had an EKG? It's actually an ECG. Yeah, the guy that invented it. His last name started with a K, so they just called it an EKG, even though it's an ECG. It's an electrocardiogram, and cardiogram is spelled with a C. So sometimes you'll mess with the doctor's head and say, so what was my ECG? And they go, huh? Oh, the EKG? Yeah, uh-huh. Well, they made up the damn letters. Anyway, so I go in there, and the one thing that kind of concerned me was I was told I had a slow heart rate. So what is a slow heart rate? They never told me what the slow heart rate was. They told me, never told me what the rate was. I had to call the next day and say, by the way, what was the number on my ECG? And turns out my slow heart rate is akin to athletes. Athletes, because of the training that they have, they their heart rates are slower, just under 60. And I'm not an athlete. I'm just a short old lady. But I guess all that lifting of 50 pounds of dog chow caused that. And plus, whenever anything needed to be worked on at the house, it required bumming up ladders and hanging curtains and hanging, uh, what do you call those, and cabinets and that, using a leveler and power tools. That was me, so I guess that's why I have a solar heart rate. So it wasn't that bad. It was 56. So that was interesting. And I knew that I was oh, ready to get uh, my shit. Don't you love the eye doctor's office? Don't you just love it? You go in there and they have all this really calming music. It's supposed to calm you down or keep you not nervous. They need to do that in the dentist office. In every dentist office I went into is like silent. There's no music or anything. You're, going to, you're already petrified when you go to the dentist. Like, oh, God, what are they going to draw? What are they going to pull out? What are they going to tell me? Well, I don't do that. What you do when you go into the dentist's office, you kind of already know what's going on in there, and you flat out tell that hygienist, don't give me a lecture, just clean them. That goes over real well. <laughs> uh, it does for me. And so I go to get my eyes checked. I think 
I just need a new prescription. My eyes got a little blurry, you know. I go in there, and they ask me all kinds of weird questions. I do a lot of sewing, and I do a lot of crafting and that sort of thing, so I do a lot of close-up work. And the, the young, I thought he was the doctor because <laughs> of the questions I was being asked. And it wasn't the doctor at all. It was an assistant. But he talked like a doctor. Sometimes I think the assistants know more. And he asked about how I, how I was with driving at night with the roads wet and the rain and the glare. And since he knew that I was, I do a lot of sewing, he says, well, how is it threading a needle? And I just looked at him and said, how do you do that? I said, I, I've gotten to the point where I have to get my husband to thread the needle. because <laughs> I can't see it. I said, and then black on black, uh, black thread and black fabric. And that was a weird question. I never had anybody ask me that. I said, oh yeah, I can't see that at all. I cannot see the black thread to sew it on the black fabric anymore. And so he did, you know, put my chin in the machine like this, like I always do, and shine the bloody bright light in my face. And I'm like, okay, now I see spots. And then he said, well, when was the last time you got glasses? And I said, about three years ago. And then the next words out of his mouth threw me for a loop. And he said, so what did they tell you about your cataracts? I said, excuse me, cataracts? I said, you're the first person to mention that word in my presence. He kind of like, oops, went, did one of these oops looks and, and I said, oh. And then he politely excused himself and he said, the doctor will be in in a minute. And here I am thinking he was the doctor. So I got foot surgery and I got cataracts that got to come out. I'll tell you what, that's the only good thing about being 65 is that Medicare is going to pay for that mess. I think I put in my dues, I think. Put all that money in it all, all my whole life since I was 16. Yeah, they can pay for my foot to be fixed and my eyes to be brand new. I'm not going to know what to do with myself. I'll be like a kid in a candy store. It's like, oh, I can see. Oh, I can see that ant crawl across the table. Can't right now. But I can maneuver a wheelchair pretty good. And then, of course, then I find out the great news about foot surgery. Mm -hmm. They're going to fuse the bones. You ever had that done? Well, they ain't doing it to my back, even though it probably should be done because I have discs that are messed up. Why does it all fall apart after we turn 60? Like at 62, everything just started going, ouch, boom, crack, bam. When I turn my head, it sounds like Rice Krispies. It goes, <laughs> no matter which way I turn it. So I got this lovely wheelchair, but it's going to get used twice. I got a husband who's going to need knee replacement surgery, so it was worth the investment. I didn't pay a lot for it. Didn't pay a little for it, but didn't pay a lot. I'm on a budget. Come on. I'm on a fixed income. <laughs> and then they got the walker. And this walker, the wheels are on the damn thing backwards. I sit in it and I try to maneuver with it because I'm not going to be able to use the foot that's getting surgery, right? And it gives my right leg. And that thing, it, it's not nice. It doesn't move the way I need it to. So I... Turned it around and looked at those wheels, trying to figure out if I could switch it around. Like, reverse it. No. That was a waste of money right there. <laughs> uh, somebody can use it, but I thought about scooting around on my knee on that. But then, I found this lovely gizmo right here. And it's a... It looks... On hardwood floors, or these linoleum floors. What do you call this stuff? Pergo flooring? I call it fake wood. But on here, it's like a toy. So, when you have <laughs> foot surgery, this little thing, it's a, it's a bless reach. It's a blessing. It's got four little wheels. It's lightweight. <laughs> and I can go to the mall or the shopping store, put my, you know, my wallet or whatever in here as I shop. And then this is the foot that's going to be, and I can just... <laughs> I can really have a fun time on this. I might just ride it through the house just to have fun before the surgery. I did it in the living room and I got some good speed up on this thing. But, you know, it folds up and I can put it in the car. It doesn't take a lot of space. I can fold it in half and put it on the back seat. I don't have to put it in the trunk. And it's got a brake and it's got this. Wait. It's got a bell. 
I guess that's for when you're in a grocery store and you come around the corner, you come zzz, around the corner and you go, here it comes, look out! <laughs> There's your grocery shopping. Um, I got it from a lady whose mom used it for 10 whole days and she only used it once in the mall. And I was like, in the mall? Dude, I'd be zooming in the mall on one of these things. Too much fun. Because <laughs> you, cause you get a good start off like this, you just go Wah, and put your foot up and then you can use the brake to stop. <laughs> But the only bad thing about getting having things fall apart on your body is all the dollar gym that's been in, you know? I don't know about you, but I need some of those dollars back. <laughs> I'm tired of spending dollars on medical equipment. I mean, that's the other thing, too. They tell you you need the surgery, and you're going to need this equipment. You're going to need a wheelchair, or you're going to need a, a knee scooter. And they won't write your prescription for it to get it, so you get it at a discounted price. You've got to go hunting for it online all by yourself. That's messed up. You think if they're going to charge you thousands of dollars to have surgery and stuff done, that the very least they could do is provide you with the stuff you need afterwards, right? And I don't mean the pain pills. Well, they're real quick to give you those, aren't they? Uh-huh. I found that out fast. Then they give you one that I look at it and go, why are they giving me something for an upset stomach? I've been under anesthesia before. I never threw up. So I have no idea why they, well, I guess it was another prescription they just wanted me to pay for. Yeah. But get this. <laughs> when you don't have insurance <laughs> and you're not on Medicare, you pay out the nose for these prescriptions. I didn't give them my health benefit information when I first went up there to get the first questions. It's just a little food for thought. And I thought, well, let me see. So they have a discount card at the pharmacy. And so I said, well, I've been using the discount card. So I use the discount card. And she said, that'll be $133.67. And I went, excuse me, for two prescriptions? And I said, um, is it going to be any different if I give you my Humana, uh, you know, health card, my benefits card. She said, well, I'll run it, but you have to come back in an hour. It was lunchtime. <laughs> it was her, right before her lunch break. So I went, what did I do? Go spend money at the grocery store. Didn't need to really do that, but I did. I had to waste the time somehow. Isn't that what we do? Isn't that what you do? You have to go to the doctors. You have to get medicine. Or you have to do this and that stuff that you don't like to do. You go do something you do like to do, like spend money on food. And sodas and snacks. Makes sense to me. So he went there, came back, and I was shocked by using that little little benefit card. I went from $133 to $14.30. That's a huge difference, isn't it? So I'm going to use my humanity card from now on. Heck with the discount card. <laughs> Bizarre. If that's a discount, can you imagine what it was without the discount card? It's probably like $300. I don't want to know, honestly. I don't want to know. Do you want to know? I'm, I was just, I kind of wanted to know for that one instance, but now I know what card to use and which one don't use it. So, <sighs> this is where I will be doing my rehab. I will be running, running. I'll be rolling around either in you know, the wheelchair or the knee scooter, which is probably going to be more the case. Except I do have to keep my foot elevated for two weeks. So that will be the wheelchair. And I have my little workstations all around the room. So I just wheel over to them, sit down, do my thing, get up, get on the wheel. Hey, or just stay in the wheelchair and wheel around each one. So I had to make a big space in the middle. But I wanted to share with you my little um, toys. My little medical toys. And my bins of stuff to create stuff with. Because this girl, eh, I cannot sit still. And I'm really going to enjoy it. The scooter. This is your holler and holler. <laughs> Getting ready to have surgery. Two of them. I hope there's not a third one waiting on me. And uh, next time you see me, I'll probably be hobbling around in here. <laughs> God bless. Uh, Merry Christmas if I don't get another video out here, but I'm going to try.